will power talk, so the computer will do the talking. Then Kara is next. Hello everyone, my name is Kara. I am on the autism spectrum and also non-speaking. This is my Tai Chi story. This is how my life started. Just like everyone else. What a cute photo, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. In the early days, any diagnosis was vague at best. Lots of different labels and differing opinions. Not very helpful when you are young and impressionable. In my early 20s, we finally had a better understanding. Autism is not only a debilitating condition, but also a debilitating label. Labels and their impact. Labels bring with them too many barriers that take a long time to slowly <coughs> break down. Once a label has been attached, the medical fraternity tends to stop looking for alternatives. Like trying to change a traditional Tai Chi practitioner's <laughs> way of thinking. It takes time. It's not easy and whatever progress you make, will have to do for now. Patience and perseverance is what gets you through in the end. Just like Tai Chi. The autism spectrum and non-speaking. Being on the autism spectrum. It doesn't mean that I can't think. It does, however, take me a lot longer to get my body to do what I want it to do. Being non-verbal or better still, non-speaking doesn't mean I can't hear or understand a conversation. It takes me a bit longer to type out the words on my devices to get my words out. Like many of you, I am not a touch typist. Also, my text-to-talk devices don't allow me to shout for me to be heard. Tai Chi really is helping me to calm my mind and gain control of my body. These are a few of the wonderful people that have helped me along the way. My mom. What an amazing person. She never gave up on me even if I did a couple of times. I started Tai Chi around 15 years ago when the local community center offered classes. Beryl and Noretta took me under their wings and made me feel very welcome in a class mainly consisting of grannies. <laughs> the Tai Chi grannies. What a wonderfully accepting bunch. Denise and Mike. Denise and Mike took over the class at the community center around 10 years ago. Noretta and I interviewed both of them to make sure they were up to our standard. We gave them a go anyway. I'm very grateful to Denise and Mike for looking at my difficulties and challenges, not as a barrier, but as an opportunity to change the focus. Over the years, I've been part of many group outings and activities. I have always been made to feel welcome and part of the groups. I started feeling that I was ready for new challenges. But what? And more to the point, how? When NDIS came to Queensland, I had a chance to be part of developing my own care plan. Finally, 
they asked me, what were my goals? It was then that I shared my dream to become a Tai Chi for health instructor so that I could teach others with difficulties and to share with them how Tai Chi might help them. Mum and I set about finding <coughs> ways to make this happen. We approached Mike to ask if he would help. He immediately <coughs> said of course, why not? <coughs> Mike and I have been doing one-on-one -on -one sessions for a couple of years now and have found innovative ways to help me to learn and to <coughs> teach. We have used technology, gestures, also expanding balls and even paint brushes to assist me. I started going to many workshops. I was really getting into the swing of it. Any workshops, demonstrations, end of year breakups, coffee catch ups or special occasion lunches. I was up for it. If there was any Tai Chi near me, I would try to attend. And so, here I am with all of you now. Attending my first week long Tai Chi for health workshop. I look forward to getting to know you all, to share with you our passion for Tai Chi, and to learn from you. and providing a platform to share my hope that we can all learn to look beyond, to focus not only our eyes, but our hearts to see what lies beneath and inside. Let's shift the focus to what is possible. Thank you for your time and attention. I can show you how my text to talk works by doing one of the warm ups with me. Then I would like you to watch as I try to teach Mike the single whip to his right, while mirror teaching using a mix of teaching techniques, gestures, sign language and verbal cues. Some of you may know Mike, so please be kind to him. <laughs> Remember to give him a positive sandwich. He will try to do his best and work within his own comfort zone. Thank you, Mike. So we've uh, done the walk around, obviously. That's all we for text to talk. All of the warm-ups are actually in there, and there's a initial greeting, um, the Wushu salute, the walk around, and all of the individual parts are actually described quite well, and a tempo that's suitable for people with challenges. So imagine some that may be wheelchair bound or have you know, chronic conditions. So that's the target group that we were looking at, and that's what we've got a bit of a project for this coming year around that. So this is just one of those. Slowly draw both hands up, turn your left hand to face you. Bring it up to just below eye level. Hand press your right hand down by your side. Keep those elbows slightly bent. Slowly turn your neck and hand gently to the left, about 60% of what is comfortable for you. Turn back to face the front. Change hands. Press your left hand down by your side and bring your right hand up, palm facing in to just below eye level. Slowly turn your neck and hand gently to the right, about 60% of what is comfortable for you. 
Turn back to face the front. Judge hands. Let's do this two more times. Remember to walk within your comfort zone. Slowly turn your neck and hand gently to the left. About 70% is what is comfortable for you. Turn back to face the front. Judge hands. Slowly turn your neck and hand gently to the right. About 70% is what is comfortable for you. Turn back to face the front. Change hands. Repeat once more, each side to about 80% of your comfort range. So you can see that the tempo is very slow and gives people a lot of time and that was the intent, it was an intentional thing. So we're going to try that slower, if that's alright. That was a little bit quick and I'll miss most of that. basically the presentation. Uh, I know that you want to have a little bit of rest, so if anybody has any questions, we'll try and answer them. Or enjoy the rest of your workshop. Thank you for your time. run that up a wall so that visually you can see the bristles but also Kara can feel that texturally in her wrist and you know even when we're doing the yangs that sort of thing so the paintbrush came into effect how to, how to actually feel what that's supposed to feel like so that's what we did and the expanding ball is self-explanatory of course you know but it's um, like going out to the garage and going what can I do and find paint brushes? <laughs> so that's how it started. Uh, I have to have a couple of clean three-inch paint brushes. Uh, and Cara since has bought herself some new ones as well. So, uh, but it's just to remind her to get the sensation. So she knows how much effort to put in and to open up those shoulders rather than have it an elbow motion. So good question. Good question. Very creative. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Are there any other things like the paintbrush? <laughs> um, look, you know, as instructors, we do have a no-touch policy, all right? Um, so when you're, when I was working with Cara, and I always have her lovely mother in present, there was a, a natural agreement that there would be some, not manipulation, but certainly some point of focus. So if I needed Cara, for example, just to roll the shoulder up and down, 
I would actually just gently put a finger there so she could sense where that was and allow and allow those motor neurons to start to trigger off and start to work. So there was a little bit of touching. It's the same as current. Is it alright if we do it again with the hand? So the hands are quite stiff normally. And I found that when I wanted Cara to have a softer hand, I suggested, you know, just follow that shape. And that worked all right. But as soon as I did this side, oh, sorry, sorry. When I had this side, it became stiff. But when I got her to put her hand on top, it relaxed. So it was a little bit of experimenting, but with permission. And it's very appropriate. It's not inappropriate behavior. So, and it's always, with Cara's explicit permission. She's 35 years old and is an adult and is responsible for her own care plans. Um, I think different clients, you'd have to have a different way of approaching things. I see that Sybil is using um, noodles. I think, I thought she was getting them to belt me around with, but apparently, <laughs> apparently it's more for guiding. So maybe a noodle approaches or something similar might work. Any, any other comments or questions? I, I actually enjoyed some of the humour she put in. Yes. <laughs> I didn't realise. Yeah. Yes. Very dry. Yes. Very dry. Um, I think, uh, Cara, you have given permission. If people want a copy of the electronic file, the uh, are there any um, eye contact issues? Um, not, not, uh, not in Cara's case, um, but of course. Because there's such a huge spectrum of issues and, and symptoms that people are experiencing and, and feeling, every individual will be individual. But uh, the general idea of what Cara is trying to do is to be able to teach people that also have barriers and also have difficulties and challenges. And it could be a broad range. It doesn't. We're not specifically, or she's not specifically targeting autism. It could actually be all other cognitive issues. So people that um, predominantly in, a, in Australia, you know, the Endeavour Foundation, the Kith and Kim stuff, um, people that are thrown into that category because it's easy to manage, those are the people that Cara wants to work with, to give them an alternative, even if it's just a little bit of motion and movement. You know, just even doing warm-ups is quite good for a lot of people. Um, so, yeah, look, Denise just reminded me, so this year there is a project where Cara will actually co-present for our business, we have a called, business called Tai Chi for Busy People, and Cara will co-present three beginners classes a week and be the co-presenter. And um, depending on the course, whether we get into good books with Pat and she passes or not, it doesn't really matter for this workshop, for us, um, she is still part of our family and we will utilise her to to give co-presentation. So that's uh, something that we're all looking forward to. We got the funding for that and Carla's going to be self-employed for a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs>